Good day, everyone. For today's topic, we are going to know about the concepts of food service facilities, architecture, and engineering. Okay, for the objectives for today's discussion, we are going to describe the primary considerations to be addressed by facilities planners to ensure the most economical use of energy in food service operations. Also, uh, we are going to study the progression of basic understanding about the primary utilities used in food service operations, as well as the, uh, to describe the construction of foods and ventilation systems and kitchens, dishwashing rooms and service areas. Also, the list of the most commonly used finishes for floors, ceilings, and walls in food service operations, and the description of the methods for reducing sound in both public spaces and employee work areas. Also, we are going to discuss the effects of lighting, levels of productivity and safe food handling and offers recommendations for minimum lighting levels in food service facilities. Now let's have a discussion about food service facilities architecture. Okay, so bear washing system in a restaurant. Okay, so this is an example of a wear washing system in a restaurant. So of course, the wear washing system in a restaurant should be done by an architect, okay, by professional engineers. And also it should have the HVAC or the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system. It also includes the hot and cold water. It should have a good floor drains, dish machine drains, electricity, steam, or natural gas, special ventilation to remove moist air, special floor wall and ceiling finishes, and of course, the special lighting. These are the pictures of the different air washing system in different restaurants. So uh, for uh, different restaurants, they have their own uh, wear washing system in which they design that in order for the sufficient movement of everybody inside the kitchen, um, especially. Okay, so of course, we follow uh, the standards in selecting the equipment or the materials to use in order to provide the wear washing system of their restaurant. Okay, so for this slide, uh, what are the economic impacts? of water system. Of course, in terms of supply, the meter cost of cold water is a measure of um, way of measuring the cost. Okay? And then heating, the energy that is being rendered to heat a water or to heat water, and of course, the waste disposal, the sewage cost of disposing of water. So this is Figure, this figure is an example of water consumptions in food service facilities. Okay, so they have the, their equipment item, which are the vegetable sink, the triple compartment pot sink. They also have the clearing spray for dishes. Okay, they also have the piece paper um, for uh, dishes conveyor type and many others. Of course, the uh, bar sink, the lavatory, the utility sink, the bean marie, the coffee urn, and single tank dish machine. Okay, so they have here the uh, uh, measurement of hot water consumption, gallons, liters per hour. So they have the, this, the high part, and then the, the high part, and then the low part. Okay. Okay. Water supply and hardware. The location of uh, okay. the location of water supply and drains are very important considerations in the design and layout process. So, in order to have a um, right um, uh, installation of the water supply, it should have or the most important consideration or considerations are the design and how it is being laid out. So it is far less expensive to add a faucet during the design phase than after the facility has been opened. So it only means that it, uh, the plan is uh, much uh, important okay, uh, than 
um, the uh, activity that you will do when you are in the actual operation or or the um, solution that you will do in the actual operation. For example, uh, you see that in uh, a certain area in your kitchen, well, you need to have a faucet there, but uh, you did not include that into your plan. Okay, let us continue. So, like what I've said a while ago, it should have uh, every restaurant have their own bare washing system now in accordance to all other aspects in their restaurant as uh, such are the budgets non budget limitations not the safety of everybody inside the kitchen of course the employee safety and the productivity the measurement of productivity in connection to time and motion studies okay? so they have their different style or their different layout of their washing system inside the restaurant okay Next slide, of course, you need to also consider the economic impacts of the water system. So if the uh, water system will make your restaurant um, negative in terms of profit, so you should not um, include that in your plan ahead, okay? in planning ahead. So you need to consider a water system that should be, that is economically beneficial. And in terms of supply, no, the metered cost of food water should uh, be um, uh, in contribution to the economic advantage or the profit, profitability of your restaurant. No, the heating, the energy to use to heat water, waste disposal, the sewage cost of disposing of water. So all of these economic impacts or factors have contribution deeply, of, uh, especially in terms of the cost no, of the expenses that the restaurant may occur if the water system is not properly installed or it's not properly um, planned. No? So before it installed, it should be planned. So if you do not have any plan at all in terms of water system, so in uh, actual operation, you might um, experience losses or you might not have the return of investment you know, that uh, supposedly you should have you know, in the first year, second or third year of the business. Okay, So this is an example of the water consumption in food service facilities. So for example, you have here the equipment item. So the equipment item uh, you the, the restaurant commonly has are the uh, vegetable sink, the people compartment pot sink, the previous spray for dishes, and so on. So here you have your hot water consumption gallons uh, in uh, the unit of liters per hour. So you have here the low consumption of hot water and the high now in terms of liters. So with this, you can uh, really measure on how many hot water or how much consumption of hot water, hot water, you are, your restaurants are um, using, okay? So the water supply location and hardware. So for this, the location of water supply and drains are very important. So in order to do that properly, you need to consider the design and layout process of locating your water supply. So it is far less expensive to add the faucet during the design phase and after the facilities has been opened. So you just compare now, if ever you plan ahead of time, the location and uh, the installation of the water supply. Of course, you need not to, to spend a larger amount in uh, installing your uh, faucet, for example, during the operation proper. So, meaning you need to have plan, you need to have plans ahead of time in terms of locating water supply. And where do you locate this water supply? So, what are the equipment to use? You will use in order to to install this water supply. Okay, so, you need to plan ahead of time. So, select the right hardware such as the faucets, the drains, faucets, and other connections. Okay, so, also, it's very important to select the right hardware, uh, the, right, the right materials that you are going to use in your water supply. Okay, so, in terms of water heating, so water heating systems, so of course, you need to heat water to temperature appropriate for dishwashing 
food preparation and lavatories. So some food service establishments maintain separate water heating systems for kitchen and lavatory use. So one system generates very hot water to be piped to the kitchen and the other warms water for the laboratories where moderate temperatures are adequate. So all forms of energy can be used to heat the water. So most uh, food service establishments use electric or gas water heaters or the fluid use oil or steam. So water heating system is very important in a restaurant. So in terms of sanitizing the um, the plates, all the um, uh, materials needed in serving the food, no? the um, pots, the pans, no? all, all of these are being washed and then after that heated. Okay, so um, we need to really have this water heating system in your uh, restaurant. Uh, it, also, it is a part of uh, how you are going to maintain the safety, the safety of the uh, uh, employees as well as the, uh, of course, the primary goal is to have a clean and safe food to offer for the customers. So water heating system is very important. Okay. okay, so let's proceed now to the energy conservation and water use. So energy saving objectives are to reduce the amount of hot water use, especially the amount of water wasted. Every time water is used, some of it is wasted. So reduce the temperature of the water to the lowest temperature appropriate for the use. So of course, you need to to uh, match the temperature of the water to use in terms of how you are going to use it. So if you want uh, just to um, to heat uh, a certain um, uh, uh, material no, or equipment uh, inside your uh, restaurant, so for example, the plates, the um, uh, glasses, the silverware, the flatwares. No? So you just need to know what is the right temperature in heating those. So you need you you should not have um uh, use high temperature in order to to um use or to clean or to sanitize those um silverwares and flatwares. Okay? So it should have the right amount or the right temperature because it when you do so, you can save energy. Okay, so this is a sample of simple energy saver and water use procedure that I uh, use solar water or solar energy. Now it is called the solar water heater. Okay, so as you can see, these are the solar panels, and these are this is the storage for the water that is being heated by this solar panels. Okay, another one is. Much complex energy saving and water use procedures. So this is called PC recovery system. So specific re recommendations for the design of energy efficient food service facilities are as follows. So a water heater uses less energy than a range tap to heat the same amount of water. Next is the water should be heated only to the temperature needed. The hot water booster should be located within five feet or 30 centimeters of equipment that means 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 82 degrees Celsius water for sanitizing. So this is the right amount or the right temperature of uh, water when sanitizing silverwares and flatwares. So spring uh, operated valves of the kitchen and restroom faucets save water. Okay, so in this uh, type of um, uh, water system. So as you can see, okay, as you can see here, so you have here the hot exhaust gas. Okay, uh, you need uh, you have here the water being uh, uh, feed to this uh, pipe, and then uh, it evaporates, and then after that, uh, it condenses. No? So the steam that uh, is from the uh, hot exhaust gas now that feeds the water okay, from uh, this uh, storage, you know, uh, it evaporates and becomes steam. And then after that, it um, condenses and cools. 
no? So, the steam is here that is also being used, no? This serve, um, not, uh, like, without uh, using this energy saving and water, uh, water, uh, complex energy saver or waste heat recovery system. So, once the, um, hot water evaporates, the, eva the gas will not be used anymore. But with this waste heat recovery system, no, the steam are being used no, after uh, the, this uh, uh, gone into evaporation. Okay? So this is very uh, also useful no, in a restaurant facility. Okay? So water conditioning system. So this machine steamers uh, ovens, coffee and beverage systems, and ice machines are all affected by the quality of the water supply to them. Manufacturers of this equipment typically provide data on minimum water quality standards. So when water that, that does not meet the uh, manufacturer standards is applied to a piece of equipment, severe and expensive maintenance problems are likely to occur. All the conditioning uh, systems where they can eliminate water quality problems completely, they can reduce maintenance and repair costs substantially. substantially. So it's important to have a water conditioning system because um, here it's stated that it can, uh, it can eliminate uh, water quality problems as well as it can reduce maintenance and repair costs. No? In terms of, um, for example, there are, there is a problem of poor, no? in terms of uh, the water conditioning system equipment. No? So, without this water conditioning system, you can be, no? you can um, have another expense no? in terms of paying the uh, repair and maintenance of, of the equipment or of the um, problems that uh, may occur without this water conditioning system. Okay, so also it's stated here that it should have the water quality standards should be checked uh, or, or should be based on the quality standards, the manufacturer's standards of the equipment to use for this water conditioning system. Okay? So food service manufacturers often recommend simple water filters as opposed to complex conditioning systems for simple equipment items such as ice machines, coffee makers, and steamers. So these units are cost effective and are able to remove particulates and impurities from the water supply. Of course, very important that the water be served to customers and be uh, used in preparing food is clean. No? It should uh, be clean and uh, um, when uh, intake by everybody, no, including the employees, especially the customers, it should be safe. Okay, so um, there are water conditioning systems that are able to remove dirt and other impurities from the water supply. So our restaurant should have possess this kind of water conditioning system. So now let's go to electrical systems. Okay, so for the electrical system, electrical energy is one of the primary sources of energy. Okay, so, so uh, there are different equipment being used no, in terms or that really needs electrical systems no, such as the air conditioning, ventilation, and of course lighting. So the basic unit for electrical energy is what? Food service of equipment must be selected to match the voltage and phase available in the facility. Of course, we need to match the voltage to the uh, equipment no? or the facility itself. Okay. So there are different guidelines for selecting electrical characteristics of food service equipment. So first, you need to determine the electrical characteristics of the building through discussion with the electrical engineer or building uh, maintenance staff. Number two is to select the piece of equipment desired and use the highest 
uh, electrical voltage possible. And then, of course, uh, this is usually reduce the size of the copper wires that must be used in building and so will reduce the cost of installation. So in choosing or selecting the piece of equipment that you are um, that you want to use, no, or electrical equipment that you want to use, it says here that you need to select or use the highest electrical voltage possible because it reduces the copper wires and it saves cost no, during the installation. Another is to um, select method for connecting the electrical equipment to the power source. You need to have the right methods no, in connecting this electrical equipment to its power source. And then equipment that will be permanently installed should be direct wired. And then a male and female adapter plug can be used for equipment that will be moved or frequently disconnected. So you really need to have a very good engineer and architect in doing this. Okay. Next. Another uh, guideline is to ensure that the electrical characteristics, electrical characteristics and the fact of connect of or appear on the mechanical drawing in the equipment specification and on the order for the equipment. Okay, so you need to really consider the electrical characteristics, no, depending on the type and um as well as the equipment specification, okay, before ordering for the equipment. So the owner's representative should work carefully with the electrical engineer to ensure that the adequate electrical power is available in all duplex receptacles. We okay, so really need to have consult electrical engineer, no? um, a uh, high professional in doing this because uh, in, if you uh, just select person that you know that you know that uh, they have this um, uh, expertise but they are really not professional no? or they do not uh, really practice this one so it might uh, cause danger no? not only for the establishment first but of course for the um, customers no? so you really need to hire right people for this one so electrical energy use and conservation so even you have lots of um, money or investment no? in putting your restaurant you really need to save no on, and to conserve energy usage no in any possible possible way you can so a serious energy management program needs to focus on demand as well as the energy use because significant savings can be realized by lowering the peak demand the food facilities consultant must be aware of the kilowatt hour rating of each piece of equipment and give consideration to the total electrical demand created as a result of the kitchen design because this is all included in your costing no the uh, consumption the energy consumption will be less to your gross profit and then you will have your net profit after deducting this cost now so you really need to save or to find ways on how to conserve energy electrical usage so for the gas so there are several factors that are very important to consider in selecting and uh, specifying or considering the specification of the gas fired equipment. Of course, first the operational practices and preferences, and then the durability and maintenance. Of course, the cost or the initial cost and the ventilation requirement. So these are the following factors. That is that are very important to consider in selecting um, gas fire equipment. Okay. Okay. So gas versus electrical equipment, energy cost. The efficient use of energy is important to the manager of a service operations, not only because everyone has a responsibility to conserve energy but also because conservation can save money and increase profit. So, 
uh, it's not only the manager's task to conserve no, the uh, energy consumption within the restaurant. So it should be everybody's responsibility to um, to take their parts, no, to be responsible in using electrical equipment because it can save money and it can increase profit. That will be the source of your uh, salaries and wages. So as part of the team, as part of the restaurant um, uh Team really need to cooperate, no, and to be concerned about on how you will, you can save the uh, energy consumption, no. So in this case, we are going to differentiate the gas versus electrical equipment. So how are we going to to save in terms of using the gas or the electrical equipment? So the average cost of energy for our restaurants exceeds five percent of the total sales. So this is the only or the average percentage cost or that your uh, energy or consumption should be should have no so exceeding to this will uh, result to negative profits no because you really uh, you have lots of costs no, to consider no food and labor costs are usually are the only costs that exceed the cost of energy so um so that's why the that energy cost should not be there should not exceed five percent no, in terms of the uh comparing to the total sales okay so you need to really conserve or to see the energy consumption okay so most of the energy used in a typical uh restaurant is used to prepare and store food so cooking equipment is the greatest consumer of the energy for these reasons okay so of course every uh product on the primary product that a restaurant offers to its customers is the food so the food is being cooked you know? so in terms of cooking this food of course it consumes energy okay Okay, so cooking equipment is the biggest consumer for energy because of the following reasons. So heat producing appliances require the highest consumption or the flow of electricity or rate of use of gas. Cooking equipment is turned on for many hours during the day often, uh, often unnecessary. Most of the heat produced is lost to the food and it's not recovered. And then the conversion of electricity or gas to heat is inefficient. Okay, so there are different ways on how to conserve the use of energy. So these are some of the um, uh, ways on how to do that. Okay, so you really need to to be knowledgeable about the equipment to use. No, if it can save energy or not of course the ventilation system because like we, we have discussed we have this um what we call the um the water heat energy um saver no um machinery no? so because the um the steam can be used no, as a source of energy no? also applicable to the kitchen Okay, not only for the water usage but as well as for the energy consumption okay next okay so how to reduce cooking energy loss okay. of course select equipment that is enclosed and insulated the num number two is cook foods in the largest quantity possible and then cook at the lowest temperature possible so carefully monitor the heating time for each piece of equipment and monitor the demand curve for the electricity so in uh the operation setting you know, um equipment are being opened uh prior to the to the dropping of or to the cooking of food so with that um situation it started to consume energy okay so if uh you really need to open this equipment you know, prior to cooking uh just set it to lower or to the lowest temperature possible to um conserve energy 
you see or or um next is if you can uh cook by batch it's uh much better okay? because uh you can save energy uh if you imagine you will cook um for a smaller amounts no so and then again you will repeat the process because you only have this uh small amount of um food to cook but if you have this large quantity to cook no um you can um uh prepare or um, have this uh large quantity of course if uh, you need to consider the standards in holding your uh, products no? in the food warmer. Uh, it can really save the uh, uh, the energy consumption in your store. Okay? So the steam. So steam is primary source of energy in many food service operations, particularly large institutional facilities that use as an energy source for purposes as well. Smaller food service facilities rarely have steam available as part of building's utility services. So steam cookery has a number of important advantages. So steam transfers energy to food rapidly. For cooking vegetables, steam is highly desirable because it prevents much of the loss of nutrients, colors, and textures that occurs when vegetables are boiled in a stock pot. Because steam always remains at 20, uh, 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius when not under pressure and at up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius under pressure of 15 pounds per square inch, it is a moderate uniform cooking medium. So steam equipment requires little, little or no warm-up time, thus preheat time losses are minimal. So cooking times are usually much shorter using steam equipment than they are using a range top cooking or boiling. So of course, you need to really consider the um, cooking procedure in your menu list. No? So if uh, you see that in your menu list, no, steam is one of the ways on how to cook a certain uh, product or certain food. So it is very uh, it is uh, very advantageous, but you need also to consider the standards now in terms especially of temperature of holding the food uh, in cooking uh, by uh, uh, steam. Okay. Utility, co utility cost and energy see, uh, conservation in selecting food service equipment. There are nine steps system that can be used by any food service manager to determine the most economic okay so let us continue there are a nine step system that can be used by any food service manager to determine the most economical fuel for heating cooling or cooking so number one is identify the relevant equipment alternatives for achieving the desired result okay Number two, for each piece of equipment and each possible form of energy, determine the utility load. Number three, convert the energy demand usage for each equipment alternatives to a common unit of measurement. Number four, determine the cooking time for several typical products that would be prepared by the equipment. Number five, Extend the cooking time to cover a meaningful period of time in the operation, such as a day or a week. Number six, multiply the preparation time for the period by the consumption of each piece of equipment. Number seven, determine the cost of each type of energy from the utility company, which ship, or from the recent bills. Number eight, convert for comparison purposes. The number nine, compare the projected energy consumption and utility costs. So these are the nine ways on how to um, save or how to determine if the equipment will be economical you know, in terms of um, it can if it can save you know, a lot of costs you know, or how you as a future manager can save you know, um cost no in terms of using this uh 
food service equipment. Uh, like in inside our house, so we uh, really have this ways on how to save energy. No? In terms of cooking, we are going to um, consider on how are we going to save our um, uh, energy or gas consumption no? in terms of cooking food. Okay, so all of this nine ways can really help food service manager to determine no, or to save or to conserve energy no, in uh, also considering the food service service equipment to use. Okay, so now let's proceed to the equipment ventilation system. So the basic functions of a kitchen ventilation systems are to capture the air by heating the air heated by the cooking process, remove as much grease from it as possible, exhaust and heated air to the, to the outside and resupply or make up the air removed from the kitchen. So ventilation systems typically capture air from cooking in stainless steel canopies hang over the cooking equipment. So the air uh, rises in the canopy by means of convection or hot air rises. A fan usually located on the roof of the building is connected to the canopy by duct work. The negative pressure vacuum uh, created by the exhaust fan pulls the heated grease laden air from the cooking surface through the filters or a structure designed to capture the grease. Okay, so Ventilation system is equally important as the uh, water conditioning system, the energy conservation uh, system, no, or different strategies on how to conserve electrical usage. So, ventilation system is equally important to those. No, it is very important to have a well-designed ventilation system for food service equipment because it can really save cost if you do so. And if it can also prevent accident now when you have this proper ventilation system. So like for example, um, in a store that uh, the menu uh, specializes or the special uh, menu type is grilled products or ihaw ihaw products. So they really need to have this proper ventilation you know, in terms of their uh, food service equipment to use. Because if they not do, do not if they do not have this uh, system, they can uh, really not execute you know, the uh, procedure of cooking, and the smoke will uh, uh, enter the entire uh, dining area that will hinder the uh, uh, customers' uh, stay, and it uh, also of course it may cause uh, uh, bad effects to their health. And uh, the worst is that they have their bad experience because of the poor ventilation system. Okay, so as um, you will uh, do your uh, restaurants, no, your in your feasibility study, you really need to uh, have this uh, plan about the ventilation systems. Okay, next is the air and humidity control for the dishwashing room. Okay, so in food service uh, establishment, the concern is that the air seems fresh and that humidity is low enough for comfort while the customers are sitting quietly in the dining room. For the employees who are more active, a workspace is comfortable if the temperature and humidity are slightly lower than in the dining room and if the air is moving rapidly. So unfortunately, in the dish room, the air is often very moist and temperature are extremely high. High. So food facilities planner must insist that architects and engineers design into the HVAC system a sufficient amount of air supply and exhaust to keep the moisture level as low as possible in the dishwashing and fat washing area. Okay, so failure to create this condition will result in low productivity and high employee turnover among the wear washing personnel because they do not feel comfortable working inside the kitchen because of the high temperature of air humidity. No? So it's very hard to move 
no, and to execute their task if they really not feel comfortable doing those tasks because of improper installation of this uh, air and humidity control. So a second problem arising from poor ventilation in the dish room is a decrease in the effectiveness of air drying as dishes emerge from the washer. So wet dishes encourage bacterial growth, make a uh, poor impression are on customers and if towel dried are likely to be contaminated with organisms that cause illness. So the growth of bacteria bacteria are prone to wet um, areas. No? Um, they really grow faster. So with the proper air and humidity control, you can prevent this to happen. And you can prevent a foodborne illness to occur. No? Because we didn't have any um, bacteria or bad bacteria growing inside the kitchen, which is harmful for both the employees and the customers. For dining, the HVAC systems, so the heating, ventilation, and the AC system for the dining room and other public spaces in a food service facility are beyond the scope of this lesson. But the best heating source are the complexities of the humidity and temperature control and the environmental treatment of all the spaces in both the front and back of the facility are technical matters that should be left in the hands of licensed and trained engineers. So they really are the ones who um, design the proper feedback systems for dining. So you should really consider to hire professional engineers no, when you are going to create your food service facility. Okay. So now let's proceed to the food service facilities architecture. So the construction of walls, the floors, and ceiling in food facilities or food service facilities. The specification and construction of building surfaces are usually the responsibility of the architect in new or renovated food service facilities. So however, the architect often asks the food service consultant and the owner for recommendations of the types of finishes that are desirable for them. So the decision of the, on the type of finish to be used may be based on the budgetary limitations rather than the desirability of the surface. Ideally, the finishes that are recommended, especially for floors and walls, are chosen on the basis of ease in terms of cleaning and resistance to damage or well, as well as the aesthetics. So there are different or many considerations. No? So the primary person to uh, or responsible in uh, food service architecture is, of course, an architect. But uh, it says here that the architect should consult the food service consultant and the owner, of course, for the recommendation of what they wanted to have in their food service facility. Okay. Of course, there are many considerations, no? except for the budgetary requirements or limitations. They really need to have uh, the design that is uh, a primary contributor in terms of the aesthetics no? or the on how people will see it or the beauty of it and of course the safety and security of these materials to use okay for the floors the floor surface in the kitchen and service area should be easy to maintain wear resistant slip resistant and non-porous so the most universally accepted floor materials is quarry tiles, which is an excellent uh, record in the food service industry for not being slippery and for resisting waste absorption. So it's uh, what we call a material for a material called quarry tile. The grout between the tile is slightly porous at first, but quickly becomes sealed from the dirt and grease of the typical food uh, operation. Okay. So floor time uh, finishes in dining room and public places can be of any material that is very resistant and easily clean. Carpeting in dining room is popular because it absorbs sound and provides a feeling of luxury, but there are different limitations. 
So, carpeting is not recommended in the following areas. The server station, the try and dish off areas, the beverage stations, the condiment stations, the major traffic aisles, and cashier stations. And uh, in terms of using ceramic tile, it is very excellent for floor finish for public rest rooms or high soil, soil areas. For the unglazed tiles, if these are best our choice because of their slippery resistant qualities and for the vinyl tile this is not recommended in dining rooms or public areas because it is uh, usually requires high uh, level of maintenance especially in boxing and frequent machine traffic for the walls walls finishes used in food storage and preparation areas Include structural glaze tile, ceramic glaze tile, concrete block with epoxy coating or paint, plaster and painted drywall as well as special materials. So budget limitations may dictate a less expensive finish over the more desirable ones. Such substitu substitutions can result in costly problems in the end. For example, one approach to reduce cost is to use concrete block with epoxy paint behind the equipment in the range section of the kitchen. So the ideal wall finishes in cooking areas are structural glaze tile or ceramic tile, either of which will resistant or will resist damage from for from heat, grease, and frequent cleaning. So it really needs you really need to uh uh, took advice from the architects and uh, the experts in this type of activity or in, th in this type of selection was selection because it's not only about the price but of course the benefit from it you now if the safety and security or the safety of everybody including the staff you now that uh, will be the one to cook inside the kitchen is um considered you no know? why not choose you no know? the great um, uh, selection or the best selection for the walls. So the standards are uh, stated in the PowerPoint. Okay, for the floors, um, these are the examples for the recommend recommended floor finishes no, uh, for different food service area. Okay. Okay, just read this. Okay, so this one is for the walls. It also uh, included here the different food service area and the recommended wall finishes. Okay. Okay, so for the ceilings, ceilings in a food service facility are of two types. The structural ceiling, which supports the floors above, and the false ceiling, which may hide ducts and other architectural features or serve mainly to enhance the room's attractiveness. Okay, so the structural ceiling and the false ceiling. So the most common ceiling materials are the following. Acoustical tile, drywall painted, plastic, plaster or painted, wood, seal or painted, exposed concrete, fiberglass, and aluminum or other metal. So if the ceiling uh, in work areas are sound absorbent, grease resistant, will probably be acceptable to health officials. So ceilings in uh, dining rooms and public areas can be constructed of or covered with many types of materials as long as they do not create either a fire safety problem or health hazard. For uh, the control of noise, excessive noise in the workplace is of concern to managers because it can cause fatigue, irritability, irritability, and low productivity among the workers. So the noise control in the dining room and public areas of a food service facility is a significant consideration in creating a pleasant dining experience. Stopping the transfer of sound from areas adjacent to a banquet hall or private dining, for example, can mean the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful meeting or convention. So architects and engineers and other food service consultants 
I spent a significant amount of time in seeking methods in creating a quiet environment. One of the problems with sound control in a typical food service operation is the nature of the operations itself. So in operations, you really have uh, different activities like um, getting orders, talking to customers, you know, talking to the kitchen staff. You know? uh, sometimes you are not conscious about uh, the tone of voice or the, um, and the noise that you have you know, that you produce while talking to different uh, people inside the restaurant. So in other uh, operations like cooking, uh, cleaning tables, uh, uh, also sweeping floors or other activities that can create noise. So sound level or loudness is measured in decibels. So noise above 130 decibels is painful to the normal ear and would seldom be encountered in a food service operations. Another characteristic of sound is the number of vibrations per second created from the sound source. The average human ear can only hear sound in the range from 15 to 20 thousand vibrations per second. In the dining environment, it is desirable to keep the decibel level low and to introduce low-frequency background music. So high-frequency music or sound is generally less pleasant to the ear, especially in an eating place where conversation is encouraged among the guests. Okay, so really the um, uh, the sound or the control of noise inside the restaurant is very important because you are not only the one who dine inside the restaurant, but you have different people with you. So in consideration to them, you need to really uh, tone down your voice. You know, if you are uh, seen with other customers or if you are employees, you really need to, to move uh, uh, slowly and carefully in order not to, to produce unnecessary noise and uh, you really need to plan your uh, restaurant in which you will just have a low tone of background music of course it depends upon the theme of your restaurant if your restaurant really wanted to have a uh, loud music so because of its theme it's connected with the theme so it's uh, okay as long as your customers really not suffer for this high or loud noise but if you really wanted to have a uh, restaurant that is much formal or even casual dining restaurant, so you really need to have to uh, music that has its low tone or um, low sound in order not to create um, irritability to customers and other complaints. Okay. Okay, so there are different materials that are sound absorbing. So, and also strategies. So, carpeting and draperies absorb sound and can create a pleasant appearance in the dining room. So, glass and uh, hard surface floors, walls, and ceilings reflect sound and create reverberations that make uh, table conversation difficult. So to control sound, the architect and uh, interior designer generally mix these materials in the public spaces of food service establishment. So these are the list of sound reduction ideas that should be um, considered in planning uh, the kitchen and other support areas. So you need to have acoustical ceilings, sound deadening coatings on the underside of the stainless steel work surfaces, Remote compressors for reach in and especially for walk in refrigerators and freezers. Electronic transmittal of orders to display screens in the preparation areas rather than by server shouting out the orders to the books because it can create loud noise. Low volume background music in the workplace, such as music that tends to discourage video owners from playing those sets full blast in the kitchen. And then physical separation or enclosure of dishwashing and pot washing from the parts of the kitchen which it was designed to prevent sound transmission. So there are different ways no, in order to really um, absorb noise no, inside the restaurant. It can be from the people and it can be from the uh, management team or it can be from the um, 
facility itself. There are different materials that can be used in order to um, absorb noise or absorb sound. That uh, this sound should uh, be only on the preference of the hearing, no? of uh, normal hearing of the people inside the facility. Now, remember not only the customers, but as well as for the employees too. Lighting. So, in order to establish light levels that can assist the eye in seeing more efficiently, there are five factors. So, first is time. So, one, um, okay. okay, one's uh, level of comfort or discomfort and therefore one's perception of time is affected by the level and tone of light. Waiting to be served and um, waiting for a check can be very tense experiences for a customer in a hurry. So the degree of environmental comfort can mean the difference between the consumers being irritated or satisfied. If a restaurant uh, doesn't have this uh, very good lighting, you know, uh, customers might feel uncomfortable or irritated. And uh, if they are irritated, they do not... Uh, stay inside your restaurant longer in a longer span of time and with that because they are uh, really irritated they might not have to continue purchasing other uh, menu uh, other dishes in your menu so it uh, will generate a low um, revenue okay. next is size so light also affects space perception so proper lighting can make a small room seem open and can make a large room feel cozy. In darkened room, people seated a few feet apart feel much closer together than they would in a room with more lights. On the menu, the size of the print has a direct relationship to the customer's ability to see efficiently at the virus at a virus light levels. Next is contrast. So the perceived The perceived difference uh, between uh, the detail of an object is the backgrounds, no? and this is referred to contrast. Again, the perceived difference between the detail of an object and its background is called contrast. The contrast between a coffee stain and a brown rug is low, for example. Good contrast between the colors of the ink and paper can make a menu easier to read at any light level. In the kitchen, contrast comes into play when cooks work on highly reflective stainless steel tables. So in terms of brightness, the amount of light the eye sees on an object surface is the brightness. So this is the last controllable element of lighting since time, size, contrast, and sound are often fixed before the acceptability of the light levels is evaluated. So putting more light of an object will improve the visibility of the object despite a small space or small size for contrast or the shortness of time allotted in which to distinguish the object. So even at home, if you really set your lighting, you know, that will emphasize the room, you know, or uh, you will uh, design your room, it's not as big as the others, but you have this proper lighting. Lighting, so it can be uh, seen as large enough. No? So there are different strategies or color combinations or lighting levels that can uh, suit your um, needs. No? Most especially in creating or establishing a, your food service facility. So as mentioned, light levels should be readjusted as the sound levels vary in the room. This can be done quite effective with the light demon switch. Okay. So the relationship of lighting to productivity. So the level and kind of light can influence the way we function both physically and psychologically. How motivated do we feel, for instance, when the weather is gray and cloudy, or when lighting is subdued or subdued rather than bright and warm? Providing more illumination, however, is not the whole answer. So in fact, reduced productivity often occurs in operation 
with highlight levels that are merely running up to utility costs unnecessary. Better lighting and higher productivity are the result of knowledgeable planning, not merely adding footage. Motivation is influenced by the people or the way people perceive their environment. Workers seldom consciously consider the light falling on their task until strain a headache or fatigue sets in the in, but it affects them none the less. With better task visibility, works can be accomplished and high standards achieved with less effort. Okay, so really when we see clearly and uh, because of the proper lighting that is being uh, directed to us no, as employees or as customers, we can really move freely and we can uh, really move safely. And um, uh, especially for the staff, no, for the manager, supervisor, kitchen staff, dining staff, it is very important to have proper lighting no, and for them to be able to move um efficiently no the, the the waves are visible no for the customers they have this uh, tone of um lights dimmer lights or lighter no it uh, really affects their feelings no or their perception of staying inside the restaurant thus giving higher profit to um the establishment because they stay and they order no? and they consume the products and services you offer Okay, so that's it for the topic, food service, facilities, and architecture. I really uh, hope you learn something about this topic. And um, again, uh, this is the last topic for this um, whole semester. And I uh, really appreciate if you uh, live um all the uh, concept for this uh, topic in a long run so i hope you really understand the topic and try to uh, uh, search more about this topic because soon as you become um, uh, managers or managers or owners of different uh, facility that you will uh, be creating you know, so you can use this concept you know, in your planning Okay, and execution, of course, or executing these principles, of course. So again, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, please stay safe and please stay healthy. God bless us all.